Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Kevin. In today's lesson, we're going to discuss 10 terms that you need to know on the ukulele. So as you start playing the instrument, maybe you start encountering some of these terms like note and chord and tablature and riff, and you really don't understand what they mean. Well, they're part of this music language that's going to help you on your ukulele journey. So we're going to go step by step through each term and talk a little bit about them and then also show you some examples so that you can kind of start familiarizing yourself with how they actually apply to the instrument. So put your learning hats on and let's get to it. So the first term and the foundation of everything that you're going to do here with your fretting hand is fret. So the fret is actually this little metal bar here that lays on top of the neck or the fingerboard. But the important thing to know about the fret is when we're referring to fret one, fret two, fret three, we're actually talking about the spaces here. So when you know the term fret, you're actually talking about this little space here that's in between the metal bar and what they call the nut, which is kind of the end of the neck where you can make sound on the instrument. So before you learn any of the other terms, learning what the frets are is very important. And it's as simple as knowing one, two, three, four, five. One little thing to mention about the frets as well is you might notice on top of your uke or on the front, there's these little dots. And those are just numerical markers for you to have vision of which fret you are actually on. You might see a dot on the third as well on some of your ukes, but mostly it starts at the fifth and they're just kind of visual markers. So term number one, that you need to know is the fret. So the next thing to mention here are the strings. So it's not important to know the term strings, but it is important to know that the strings all have a name. So learning and memorizing these string names is gonna be very important as you go and very important to the language of music. So the string names here, starting from the top, are G, C, E, and A. Now, knowing those, memorizing those, maybe coming up with a good acronym like good children eat apples could be helpful for you in learning. But when it comes down to it, you also need to know that playing one of these strings creates the term, which will be term number three, is note. So a music note is just one single pitch. It can also be a duration of how long a pitch actually exists. So if you look at the graphic below, you can see on a music score what a music note would look like. But in layman's terms, basically all you need to know about a note on the ukulele is that it is one single pitch. Now that could be played by just playing a single string. So if I were to play the A string, I'm playing a single note. If I were to play the A string three times, I played three A notes. I didn't play anything other than just a single note. Now, you could also hold down one of the strings on any given fret. Let's just pick the third fret here on the A string, and if I were to pluck that, I'm playing a different note. So notes all have pitch depending on where you play them. The higher you go on the frets, the higher the pitch of the note. So if I were to start here on three, you can hear the ascent of the pitch. So the next term that you need to acclimate yourself is the term chord. Now chord is actually a collection of notes. So when I say chord, I mean that I'm playing a series of notes in unison. So if you look at a chord here on the fretboard, let's say I'm just gonna play a C chord and you can see the graphic below of how a C chord would be set up. So I'm putting my ring finger here on the third fret on the A string. Now when I strum across the strings here, I'm actually gonna play four different notes because I'm playing the G string, the C string, the E string, and I'm going back down here to a C note actually on the bottom string, the A string. So I played those four notes in unison. If I were to strum those, that would be a chord. So in learning the term chord, you need to know that you're gonna start seeing graphics on song sheets 
and websites where you might look for songs that you're trying to learn, you're gonna see chords. And chords will be diagrammed out with dots on them to show you where your fingers are gonna be placed. But the main thing that you need to know about a chord is, is that it is a collection of notes played in unison. So chords can exist without notes, and notes are just simply the foundation of chords. This next term is an important one. This is called tab, or you might see it written as tablature. Tablature essentially is, is numerical music notation. So tab will tell you the number of the fret and the string that you're actually playing. And that could be showing you a note, or it could be showing you a chord. Now, I have a full video on reading tablature, so I'm not gonna go extensively into this today, but I'll leave a link in the description for the full reading ukulele tabs video. But the big thing to know is that tab is just referring to numerical notation, whereas standard music notation is written on a music staff, tab is actually written on a grid that is just identifying what the strings and the fret numbers are. So the next term to get familiar with is chord progression. So we talked a little bit about chords. When you take a bunch of chords and put them together, that becomes a chord progression or a series of chords. So if I were to play, for instance, and you can follow along on the graphic below, the chord C, A minor, F, G7, I just played a simple chord progression. Chord progressions could be two chords, it could be six chords, it could be 25 chords, it could be as many chords as your heart desires actually, but it's all going to be called a chord progression. Now, chord progression leads me to my next term, which is strumming. So strumming is how you take those chord progressions and kind of bring them to life. So strumming is simply done with your strumming hand, whether it be your left or right hand. In my case, it's my right hand. But what that actually is, strumming is just taking your finger and brushing across the strings. Down and up. So to give you a little example here, I'm going to play that same sequence of chords, the chord progression, with the new term strumming. So I would go one, So while I mentioned strumming, I thought it'd be important also to mention that with strumming, you're not just going to encounter random down-up strums, but to organize that a little bit better, you would use the term strumming pattern. Now, strumming patterns can be noted in a couple of different ways, and you'll see them on the grid below, but sometimes you'll see them noted with a D and a U, noting down and up. Or in music notation, there's a couple symbols, which you can see below there, that will note for the down and up strum. And also, you might just see an arrow going up or down, telling you whether to strum down or up. So a common strumming pattern, I thought I'd just give you as an example here, and this might be the first strumming pattern you encounter, is the island strum. So the island strum is noted with down, down, up, up, down, up. And you would see that written as D, D, U, U, D, U, or you might see it with arrows or the symbols. So I thought it was important just to mention that as part of the strumming term here, because you will be encountering strumming patterns as you play the uke. So the next term that I'd like you to get familiar with is scale. So don't be scared by this term. It's not referring to those little things that you see on a fish. It's referring to a series of notes, which you already know is just a single note. Well, a scale is just taking those notes and organizing them, essentially. I'm not gonna get into a big music theory discussion on scales, but what you simply need to know is scales give you the map to play what the next term will be is lick and riff. But first, let's check out this term, which is scale. So scale, and I will just play one for you, and you'll see on the tab below how this works out. But the scale I'm gonna play is the C major scale. If you wanna take it down to the foundation here, basically the scale I'm going to show you is 
do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do, which is something that most of us learned early in our education life, and it's something that you'll still use when you're playing ukulele all these years later. So a scale defined here is just gonna be going from C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. Scales, something to note about them, is they start on the same note they finish on. So if you heard me go through the scale and I go it one more time here, we went C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. Or Do, Re, Mi, Fa, So, La, Ti, Do. So as I mentioned, the scale is good to know, but how are you going to actually use these scales? Which brings me to the next term, riff. You may hear this riff or lick term thrown around in blues, it's thrown around in jazz, and all it really is referring to is the simple term melody. So the scale gives you the map for playing the riffs. What a riff actually is, is just taking a couple of the notes from the scale and playing them as a melody. So we had our do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. Well, yes, that's a melody, but it's basically just playing ascending through the scale. Well, what if I took some of those notes from the scale and just turned them into my own melody? Well, that's how you make a riff or a lick. So I'm just gonna pick three notes here from my C major scale and play them and just kind of create a little riff. So if I were to take the last three notes of the scale and turn them into a riff, well, I would just kind of pick the order that I wanted to play them in, see what sounds good. Now there's gonna be some combinations that sound better than others, but ultimately it's something that you kind of improvise or maybe you learn from a tab from a lick that's set in stone. But here, I'm just taking these three notes and I could play them in any order I want to make a riff. So I'll just play a little example of a riff here for you. So I could go or those are simple riffs or melodies that you could use. And again, I'll refer to the ukulele tabs video that I have here and some of my other videos in the description so you can learn more about some of the other terms that you'll come in contact with such as slide, pull off, hammer on, and some of the more technical terms that I'm not going to go in depth into today because I have separate videos for them. But all in all, you need to know that a riff or a lick is just a derivative of the scale. So last but not least, I want to mention the term time signature. So time signature is actually referring to how many beats are in a measure. So typically you're not going to see a lot of ukulele music written in standard music notation, but sometimes you will be given a time signature. And examples of this, as you can see below, might be 4-4 four, four, or 3-4 or 6-8. Now I'm not gonna go into a long discussion about this, but simply know that if it's four beats in the measure, or four, four, and you would apply this to a strumming pattern by going one and two and three and four and. Your down strums are on the numerals and your up strums are the and, and they fit into that measure of four. If it were a measure of three, you would just go one and two and three and. Same thing applies for six or any other odd time signatures that you might encounter. But just know that that's kind of what it's relating to and how it relates to your strumming patterns or finger picking patterns. It all kind of comes back to time signature. And if you wanna go a little bit further into it, you can do a little research online and really kind of get into the foundation of time signature. Now, coupled with time signature is tempo. So tempo will be denoted by a BPM or beats per minute. So this is something that you might see again on a song sheet or in a tab telling you the speed at which the song is being played. The higher the number that you see, 140 BPMs, 
is going to be a lot faster than, let's say, 60 BPM. So as you learn some of these terms here, it's good to know that your time, your tempo, all kind of relate back to some of these other terms that we've talked about throughout the video. Well, those are just 10 of the common terms that you will encounter when playing the uke. You may encounter others, but these are 10 good ones to get you started. Now, yes, it is important to know these terms, memorize these terms, but more importantly, you need to start using these terms in your vocabulary when you're playing. When you're talking to other people about music, it's important to be able to convey to another player that the song is at a certain tempo or that you're playing a certain chord progression. So using these terms is the best way to kind of get them to start sinking in. When I first started playing music, I didn't really know what any of these terms were. Until I started using them in regular practice, that's when they became more comfortable and I became more confident saying them. And it also helped me become more confident and comfortable with my instrument. So if you have other terms that you have in question, leave them in the comments below. I'd love to hear some of the phrases that maybe you guys have come across that are common. And I know in different countries, you know, there might be a little different terms and ways of saying things too that I'm not familiar with. So I hope these will helpful for you. If you like this video, make sure you subscribe to the channel, click that little alert button so you know when the next video is coming out. We got a lot of great content coming out for you on a regular basis. My name is Kevin. Thanks so much for watching this video today. And don't forget to go over to allforyuke.com because I put together a comprehensive list of all of these terms that you can print out for free, take them with you, put them in your ukulele binder so that you just kind of have them in front of you so that you're familiar with them as you're playing and practicing at home. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks so much for watching.